Stair Construction Unit 3, Lesson 2. Calculating and framing a landing with a half-turned stair with different flooring thicknesses. Upon completing this unit, you will be able to design and lay out a half-turn landing and calculate the landing height and the bottom riser heights for both the upper and lower stringers. Here's our basic plan view of our half-turn landing. The dimensions shown are to the face of framing and nose of treads, and do not include drywall. Note that we have installed a 2x4 wall between the upper and lower runs of stairs. Although this is a common method for framing a half-turn stair, it is also possible to have an open balustrade between the upper and lower runs. The 82 inches of width is more than ample to meet our current code clearances of 36 inches for the upper and lower runs of stairs. Here's how we will frame our platform. Similar to how we extended the platform in the quarter turn stair to accept the upper stringer, we will bump out our landing for the half turn stringer as well. The two by four partition wall, which will extend up higher than the landing, will be built first and provide a convenient breaking point for the bump out. Dimensions here are to the face of the landing joists. Note also that the clearance dimensions for the upper and lower runs of stairs. Once drywall is added to our dimensions, they will be reduced by one inch and give us an allowable 38 and one quarter inches of width in each run. Here is a cross section of the lower run and landing as well as the critical information for our stair. In this example, we have flooring materials of 3 quarter inch hardwood on the lower floor and half inch carpet to be installed in the other areas, including all the stair treads, the landing, and the upper floor. Our total finished rise has been determined to be at 123 and 3 eighths inches. Some total rise dimensions may result in an odd number of risers which, if we want the landing at the halfway point, would not work. To have the landing at the halfway point of the rise, we must have an even number of risers. If your risers, number of risers is an odd number, just add one additional riser to get an even number before you calculate your unit rise. Our math in this case, based upon the maximum riser height of seven and three quarters, nets us a quantity of 16 risers. This will work since it's an even number for our mid-height landing. The result is a unit rise of seven and 11 sixteenths inches. We will be using our standard unit run of 10 inches in this example. To find the finished landing height, take the total finished rise and divide by 2. This gives us our finished landing height of 61 and 11 16 inches. But unlike our quarter turn stair, where all the finished flooring materials were the same thickness, we now need to compensate for the 3 quarter inch hardwood that will be installed on the lower floor. Here's how we will calculate the ledger height for the different flooring material thicknesses. We will start with the finished landing height and then subtract the thickness of the landing subfloor and the finished flooring materials and then add the thickness of our bottom flooring material. So our math is 61 and 11 sixteenths minus the half inch carpet of the landing minus the three-quarter inch subfloor of the landing and then add in the three-quarter inch for the hardwood on the lower floor. This gives us a ledger height of 61 and 3 16 inches off the lower subfloor. The next step is to calculate our bottom riser height for the lower stringer. This process is the same as we learned in Unit 2. Recall that our formula for the bottom riser, riser height is the unit rise minus the tread and subtread thickness 
plus the bottom floor material thickness. This gives us a bottom riser height of 7 and 3 16 inches for the lower stringer. Here is the cross section for the upper stringer. Note that the depth of the platform allows the heel of the upper stringer to fully rest on top of the landing. Also note that the height from the top of the landing to the top of our finished upper floor is the same as the lower height. Our bottom riser height on the upper stringer will not necessarily be the same as the lower stringer. This is because the bottom flooring material, which on the upper stringer would be carpet on the landing, is not the same thickness as the bottom material thickness on the lower stringer. In this case, our math goes like so. Unit rise minus the subtread and finished tread materials plus the bottom material thickness equals our bottom riser height of 6 and 15 sixteenths. Your assignment is to complete the written assignment for Unit 3, Lesson 2, and turn it into the instructor. Congratulations! You have finished this portion of the stair construction course.